Hey guys, it seems that our quality of life is deteriorating from trickery. Let's talk about that when I return on the Eric McNeil Be Free Show. Black men and white men, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics will be able to join hands and sing in the words of the old Negro spiritual, free at last, free at last, thank God Almighty, we are free at last. Hey guys, welcome. You've just discovered the Eric McNeil Be Free Show, where it's all about being financially independent, responsible for self, enjoying life, and empowering others free. Uh, so today, I just want to talk about our quality of life uh, deteriorating. It just it looks, seems to be deteriorating right before our eyes uh, through a lot of trickery and things of that nature. Um, and technology and uh, I'm a technology person but the way that I see the technology being used is very troublesome for me and it seems that we have allowed ourselves to be programmed in a manner and allowed ourselves to become controlled by algorithms you notice how everything now is about an app like an app is controlling our every facet of life is controlled by like an app and we're living in what they term to be a gig economy we don't have jobs people don't have jobs anymore they get gigs right you get a gig on Fiverr you get a gig on Uber you get a gig on Glovo, you get a gig, right? And that's how you make your money so that there's really no company anymore. It's just like some app that controls <laughs> your entire life. <laughs> and so you don't have benefits. You don't have health insurance. You don't have uh, the camaraderie of, you know, people associating your company. And in fact, if you are dealing with one of these gigs, you are compelled to compete with each other. Like, you know, you're watching your phone, the first one that answer the gig and go get the call. You know, hey, I got a gig. I got to go. You know, and, um, and other people are competing with you for those gigs. And so it just creates this very... And disturbing type of economy, this dystopian economy and uh, that we're creating. So everything is, just seems to be deteriorating and it's being controlled by these, I don't know, foreign powers that are nowhere close to you. You know, the people who control these apps are usually like some uh, Silicon Valley type, you know, uh, individuals who just come pop out of nowhere say hey, we got this uh, app that we're going to let everybody use and you know it, and it just kills society because uh, that money then transfers a transfer of wealth away from uh, your country away from your homeland to some black hole somewhere around the world and nobody can really uh, survive from what I see is happening and um, and not only that but even the foods that we now eat and we now embrace uh, seems to be helping to destroy our society and our way of life um, you have these companies such as Beyond Meat and what is Impossible Meat and so they tell you that, well, Eric, this is good stuff because it's plant-based. Yes, that's what they tell you to make it sound real good. Now, I'm going to tell you, I have no problem with people deciding to live uh, a vegetarian lifestyle and eating, uh, and avoid eating meat, a vegan lifestyle, and avoid meat or dairy altogether. I have no problem with that. Now, you know, I I was uh, 
vegetarian and uh, you know probably 13 years or so and uh, I, I eat meat now but um, I don't eat a lot of it but I try to eat meat that's free of chemicals that's the main thing that I'm concerned about it's not whether you're eating uh, some chicken or not but just try and eat chicken that's free of these harmful chemicals that's where I see all of the problems at but um, when you get into all of this this stuff that comes out of a box that they're calling uh, they're telling you it's plant-based like this beyond me and impossible and all that stuff that stuff is not <laughs> vegetarian uh, uh, vegan type uh, food that's not real food right so you're gonna say hey I'm vegan I'm ve eat you some real whole food not this chemically produced garbage that you're eating called uh, some beyond meat and things like that and they tell you that it is plant-based. Well, I, hey, uh, if that's the case, um, motor oil is plant-based. You're going to go get you some motor oil and you go, it's plant-based. Oh, no. Um, don't be fooled by, by these twisting of words and stuff. It's plant-based. Uh, you know, it's, no, it's, it's created in a factory, in a kit, some lab. And it's not real food that you're eating. Um, and the same with the, the oils that the foods are cooked in now. Man, these things are destroying us. They're destroying our way of life. They're destroying our society. Uh, right here in, in Ghana, you know, they used to have a, a thriving um, coconut oil business, you know, years ago. Uh, they had a thriving, and that's a lot of people, you know, cook their food with coconut oils. And then... Uh, the science told them that coconut oil is bad for you. It's bad. And, man, you just, coconut oil business. <laughs> it's bad. It's bad, y'all. That coconut oil killing you guys. <laughs> coconut oil business just going, going down, down, down. And you know when it hit rock bottom, the science then came out and said, guess what? They're like, what? We discovered that coconut oil is actually good for you. It's a superfood. It's so good. What? It's a superfood? In Africa, the nearby kids, uh, coconut oil business just gone. They said, but we got, we got it. I, Ghana ain't got no coconut. We got coconut oil. You come and buy, it's a superfood. You come and buy. It. It's expensive now. <laughs> so they raised the prices, you know, and start selling people coconut oil. Tell them it's a superfood. Yeah, and that's how they do it, you know, and they have us, and now they're doing the same thing with, uh, let's say, palm nut oil. They're telling people, oh, that palm nut oil is bad for you. Don't avoid that palm, I'm gonna palm nut oil, just business, just going, shh, just avoid that palm nut oil. And the Chinese slowly just increasing their palm nut uh, oil business, just slowly and methodically. And when it get down to shh, when they destroy the palm nut oil business, make it unprofitable for the people who are selling it to stay in the business, and it's gone, then, oh, y'all know what? That palm nut oil is a superfood. How about that? <laughs> but we got it all. You had to come over here to China to get that palm nut oil. Now, boy, I ain't got no palm nut in West Africa. ain't got no palm nut. They destroyed they palm nut oil business. Yeah, that's how they do it. And in, in place of it, they tell you that um, you should replace it with these oils that they say are plant-based vegetable oils, like canola oil, soybean oil, sunflower oil, uh, grapeseed oil. And you go around buying that stuff thinking that that's healthy. And here's, you know, but you avoid things like palm nut oil, uh, coconut oil, olive oil, um, avocado oil, or even butter, uh, tallow, or lard. You know, they told us all that stuff was bad. All that, But it, here's what I tell people. I got just a basic rule of thumb. If you can't go and make that oil in your backyard, then I don't want it. I don't want it. Like, you can go see 
uh, the lady making that palm nut oil right there on the street. You can go back and you can make some coconut oil just like that. Ain't no big deal. Hmm? You can make some butter. Ain't no big deal. You can make some lard. You know, you make that stuff. And you tell us that stuff was bad. Oh, it's got too much fat. It's too much fat. Well, what are we going to replace it with? Oh, we got these coconut and canola oil. We got this sunflower and soybean oil. It's all plant-based. It's plant-based good for you, Eric. No, you can't make that stuff. They tell you it's plant-based. Can you go and make some uh, canola oil in your backyard? Can you go make some grapeseed oil in your backyard? Or some soybean oil? Can, can you just go make some? You see people making it in their backyard? No. No, they got to make it in a factory. Yeah. And all that stuff is just killing us and our quality of life. The more they've introduced these types of uh, things into our life, the worse they become, our lives have become. Uh, the sicker we have gotten, and it has not improved us. So they've introduced all this stuff that has just deteriorated our life. Um, yeah, from the from the types of foods to the technologies that control us, man, life is just deteriorating for most people, right under our noses, guys. And this is why. Uh, I decided to just move away from all of that stuff. I, you know, I tell people, man, I don't have a TV, and I'm just really not uh, one to get excited about television, but so many people are hooked on this thing, and um, and they come over here, and man, they be like, you, you don't have a TV? And no, I don't have a TV. Don't have any plans on getting one. You guys have heard me say that. I'm, I'm good. I mean, you know, quite naturally, if I'm with somebody and they uh, want a TV, I'm not going to tell them, you know, you can't have no TV. But they know my stance that uh, I'm not going to be sitting there just watching no TV. That's just not something I do um, because I think it has a tendency to program this uh, kind of, um, you know, mindset into people that destroys our life. It's nothing healthy. You know, we live in a life now where we don't uh, bond with nature. We don't bond with each other. You know, we don't go out, sit down. I mean, even all of the pandemic stuff has just bred this type of life where uh, you're used to living a solitary life. You're used to uh, not uh, being around other people right because they tell you social distancing you see how it's just being programmed social distance you have to social distance like when you go to meet somebody now you're uncomfortable even embracing with them giving them a handshake or a warm hug we don't do that anymore so they've created this mindset that you need to avoid people and when you tend to avoid people then it creates this this uh, zone where uh, you don't even want to be around them, right? You, you, you now, uh, the young people that grow up in this are even somewhat uh, nervous about being around people. They don't know how to relate to people because this is what society is teaching them through all of this social distancing so you know um, it just and it gets worse and worse and so this is why I say our lives are just completely deteriorating under uh, this the, these new systems that they have of control and so at any rate you know when we uh, talk about like our community which is migrating culture crossing. You know, I had all of this in my mind when I, you know, when we started laying out, well, what are we trying to accomplish in uh, this community? And, and for me, it was just getting back to basics where you have a community where they recognize the importance of healthy food first and foremost. That's why we have an organic food forest because I believe your food should come from the farm to your table. And when you can see 
that this is real food. Like, you know, you talk about this beyond meat and all this kind of stuff, but I prefer to have, like, right here, let me show you this. This is what I consider to be real food. Like, these bananas, I just, you know, picked right out there in my yard off the banana tree, right? A bunch of bananas. And that's what I call real food, guys. Not this stuff that's created in your land just because it's based on, it's plant-based. <laughs> you know, they take a molecule or uh, something from the banana and, and create this totally different uh, type of, uh, uh, I don't know, chemical substance that they call plant-based food. It does not mean it's, it's, it's a banana, right? I take a molecule from a banana or from the banana skin or from the banana tree and I create some totally different uh, uh, type of food uh, that they call food. It's not even really food. And then we say, oh, that's plant-based. That's plant-based. And you go grab it in because they put in some chemicals that make it taste good to you. And you're like, mm, it's good, Eric. It's good. Yeah, and it's killing you. It's killing you. So, so at any rate, yeah, so migrating culture crossing is just about uh, going back to basics, you know, being responsible for your own existence. Like, hey, you're self-sufficient. We know we need water, uh, you know, food, water, shelter, and clothing to survive. So why not create a community where those things are first and foremost? And it's not about, you know, we can use, you know, I'm not one to just shy away and not use technology, but we need to use technology responsibly where we don't let it control our every life, you know, I, everything about our lives. We can't let technology control us like that. We have to be responsible for ourselves. We have to be responsible for our own water, you know, so that's why we're, uh, we'll have boreholes drilled in the community and we'll be responsible for cleaning our own water right there um, and be responsible for growing a lot of the foods that we eat now. Uh, will we be able to grow all of the foods? We have 40 acres, but no, that won't uh, grow all of the foods. But you know, you, you uh, grow as much of the food as you can and then you source foods responsibly from nearby farms and keep them in, in employed where as you don't just irresponsibly import these foods from overseas that you have no idea what sent them. And, um, this is what life is about, guys. It's, it's simplicity. Um, growing your own food and being responsible for your own livelihood because right now uh, they've gotten rid of pretty much jobs where you can go and you can work until you I don't know retirement age and you can get a gold watch this is what we used to be used to in the US you know they tell you you go get a good job you work and then at the end of it all you retire get your gold watch or something like that that's gone. That's gone. You have two classes being created. Um, the elite class and uh, their employees like up at the top of these so-called gig economy companies, these technology companies uh, like Google and Facebook and Uber and you know at the very top they control this thing and you know their employees and uh, granted, I was one of them, so I know, you know, the employees getting uh, 200000 $300,000 uh, salary with stock options, you know, make them millionaires. And then you have the people at the bottom who have to work the gigs, right? You're part of the gig economy. You have nothing. And, you know, tell you, hey, uh, go buy you a bag at, for Globo get you a bicycle and something happens to you, you get hit, then uh, there's no company to pay for your bicycle, you have to pay for that bicycle. And there's no company to pay for your insurance, you have to pay. Uh, when something's wrong with the app and you can't um, make money, 
uh, the company is not paying you because you're getting paid to deliver per order. So um, they lose no money and, you know, you just barely scratching by, guys. So I'm just telling you that side going down. So at any rate, you know, you like what we're talking about, go ahead. Hit that subscribe button. Like, share, comment. Let me know what you think about, uh, you know, our new way of life that we're developing. And, and um, you know, you're welcome to come over and to Migrating Culture Crossing. Go to our website, www.migratingculturecrossing.com. And if you want to be a part of that type of community, I encourage you to uh, think about buying a home there. And also, you can find me on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Eric McNeil is free. And as always, oorah, ahuru. Now be free.